Hi, my name is Mr. Diaz, and I'm from Blank MP4 Media Company. Uh, so my company focuses on editing videos and photos uh, for social media purposes with a modern aesthetic that fits TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. So yeah, that's my company and my social media company. Um, and here today on, in this webinar, I just want to talk about the art of travel videos. Um, you know, when you think of social media, I don't think the first thing you think of is sort of travel videos. You kind of think of advertisement or photos of the day or just promotional photos in a sense. But on social media, at least from what I discovered, is that travel videos do exist, especially on YouTube and some variation of it on, on, on uh, Instagram. But uh, today I just want to talk about how travel videos, uh, how you can enhance your travel videos, tips and tricks on how to enhance your travel videos. Um, I, this is a very um, niche passion of mine, I guess. I adore editing edit, uh, travel videos for from my own travel videos to other people's travel videos. I think it's really fun in a sense where you get to tell a story through just a few seconds of clips that you get here and there and all of a sudden, oh, hey, you got to put a put it all together to, ter to, ter to tell this kind of cohesive and well thought out and kind of good paced story through just clips and no narration. So it's a really cool way to challenge oneself if you want to like improve your storytelling ability without actually telling a story, if that makes sense with no dialogue. So uh, yeah, travel videos, it's a, it's a really uh, interesting niche that I think blew up a couple years ago on YouTube. It's still popular now, but due to the COVID situation, not everybody's making their travel videos, especially myself. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been editing videos for eight years. And uh, in those eight years, um, I've done a couple travel videos. So I just want to go through some of my personal tips and tricks and how I usually edit. Of course, everybody can vary. Everybody's different. So yeah, uh, here we go. First slide. Uh, tip number one, edit to the beat. So, uh, excuse me, I only have frames to represent what I, uh, I'm talking about, but that's just because when I tried with video, the file sizes were too big and it kept crashing my computer or the application I use. So, uh, yeah, forgive me. So here, I'm going to do my best to explain what is going on within the slide. So, uh, tip number one is to edit to the beat. Now, this is a very common, you know, uh, if you go on any YouTube channel in the modern age, uh, any filmmaker um, that started in the last five years who are videographers of some sort, well, their their advice would always to say edit to the beat. And now this, this is good. It's being repeated everywhere because it is good advice. You know, when you have, uh, when you have a certain flow state you're trying to achieve in your video, it's best to edit to the beat. And it doesn't sound jarring to the human uh, experience. Uh, not human experience. It doesn't sound weird to like the, ex the person, the audience who's experiencing it. If you if it's on the beat, because as humans, we're we're kind of trained to to go with uh to to how do I say this? We're, as as human beings, right? We're sort we're sort of just we get into certain flow states by following a certain type of pattern or something, right? So any that can be things from the drums to like the bass buildup of an EDM track or or just some weird like uh, tapping tick, 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 tick in the background of a song. You can find any sort of beat in a song and then just follow it. Right now, of course, you don't have to follow like the, the main, you know, the very the, you, don't, you don't always have to follow the, 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 the beat that's in front of the song, the, the loudest one. If you can really take your time to learn the, the song you're, you're, you're editing to and you can find those little moments, right? Those little, those little offset moments where the beat isn't so present, but it's there and you edit to that. That's also cool. Um, I did mention in the live stream earlier uh, during this uh, whole um, branding your own, um, brand, building your own brand thing is that I, in the live stream, I was also talking about tips and tricks on how to edit social media videos. And I did say that uh, it's, it's best to uh, add it to the beat, but at the same time, keep it at the back of your head that you have to disrupt, disrupt that beat. Um, for, so for example, like uh, if, you, if, if, if for a few seconds you're following this like super heavy, you know, drum, drum hits, right? You just hear the, you hear that type of tone. And then all of a sudden you hear in the background a little bit of a cymbal. So you follow that instead. So you go from two,
I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, yeah, um, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, edit to the beat, and then once in a while disrupt it so that way you can keep your audience's attention up because there, there's nothing else you want than your audience falling asleep halfway through your video just because you, they've been they've been following the same type of uh, pacing the entire time. You want to disrupt that pacing by disrupting the beat by finding other beats within the music. So uh, I guess like a mini tip is to also like find a song and actually really listen to it. There, there's a thing in editing where, at least in my experience, where if you edit for, let's say, on a, you, you, you've been editing a video for, let's say, a week, maybe a couple of days, right? And you're using the song you found, you know, maybe on the internet, somewhere, you know? And uh, by the end of that experience, by the, being, by the moment you start and you find the song, you're like, oh, this is a killer song, this is banging. So at the end, where you're like, all right, here's the video. I'm releasing it or giving it to a client. You never want to listen to that song ever again. I, I, I have, you have no idea how many songs I've ruined for myself. So I've tried to avoid, you know, my own personal music where I'm like, oh, this would fit so well with this type of video. But then I step back and I'm like, wait a minute. I actually like the song. I don't want to like ruin it after five days of just listening to it. So yeah, that's a, that's a one little tidbit. Find a song you like, but don't find a song you personally like. Find a song you like that fits the video. And then when, when that whole experience is over, forget about it. You're never going to remember it again because you're going to hate that song so much by just re the repetitive listening. All right, tip number two is go with the flow. Now, this is a pretty simple one compared to like the first one explaining how to edit to a beat. But uh, go with the flow is pretty much in, if there's any motion uh, in your video, that's going from left to right, up or down, follow it. So for example, here I have, um, by the way, these, these, these screenshots are from my travel video to Cebu um, before COVID hit actually, like literally a couple months before COVID lockdown happened. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, in this one with Go to Flow, there's a, a man on a, a, a motorbike and he's going uh, on on my screen, at least he's going right. Okay, he's go and in the video as well, it plays out as him driving towards the right side. And then from there, I transition into candle makers because this is all filmed in the same area where I'm slowly moving the camera uh, in kind of a panning motion to the right to get their what they're doing. And then it leads to the candles, which are lit, which is the third one at the bottom. Uh, where I'm also panning right, so it it keeps um, when you when you decide to use movement in your in your travel videos, especially if it's like the panning shots, right? Uh, I would suggest to just go with the flow for a couple of seconds. So I just want you to imagine this scenario. Imagine this motorbike goes right, and then the next the next scene where I'm uh, filming these candle makers, I'm panning left. So it kind of creates like this weird like collision i guess of direction right it, it feels it will feel weird and off and uh for a, for at least a couple seconds or a couple frames or a couple scenes you should go with the flow just create that momentum and then find a creative way of breaking that momentum like kind of like the beat thing where like i or like i said earlier where you when you when you decide to break the flow with a certain movement it can be on an offset beat like matching it with a certain beat or you find or using a creative transition like doing a mask or um finding a clip where it transitions smoothly from like that that right to maybe upward movement right or that right to downward movement if you find clips you really got to cycle through your clips to find that kind of perfect transition point where you want to get out of the flow or you can, again, you can be creative and you can just find other ways to get out of this flow state, right? So instead of, you can, instead of the whole video going always right, you need to go right, 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 right. Then maybe down, 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 then left, 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 left. But uh, I never suggest going like the extreme back and forth. For example, if you're going right, you never want to go left. You want to go right, maybe find a clip that has, has something moving uh, right, uh, straight, like just uh, a straight pan and then transition to a left because it just looks weird and it feels weird and talking about it also makes me feel weird. So yeah, just when that, when, when you're trying to get into that flow state, just don't, yeah, you know what I mean? Just don't try to, try to uh, break it too fast, but also don't keep on it too, too long. It's all about practice, I guess. Um, all of these, these tips up, up to, uh, that I'm going to be talking about today 
can be like re- learned really well with practice. It's really hard describing it uh, since uh, I I kind of grew up. Uh, I kind of grew a sense to it, like a feeling, right? So I know, oh, this should this happen here, this should happen here. And the only way you can do that is if you practice uh, your editing. Whew, okay, anyways, moving on. Tip number three, be smart with transitions. Now, um, in the modern age of, you know, kind of online editing, there's this thing, phrase of uh, transitions, you know, the zoom in transitions, the swirl transitions, the eye drop ink transitions, all these crazy transitions that all these wonderful video creators are making but the problem with transitions is that there's so many out there people are just kind of using it whenever they want oh transition here i'm gonna drop this here i'm gonna drop this here cool look how how many times my footage is spinning uh each time there's a new scene you know like that type of thing oh look look how many rgb colors uh, are popping out um so my tip tip number three so tip number three would be be smart with transitions in a sense where Instead of always, you know, if there's a cut in between several clips and you just want to put a transition in between, you do you, that I can't really say anything. But I, in my opinion, that kind of ruins the magic of a transition. So, for example, here I have, um, again, this is a trip, a frame from a trip from a Cebu. And this was purely coincidental. I wasn't planning on it, but I was being smart with my clips. I rewatched them a bunch of times and I made sure that I knew my clips uh, from, like the back of my head. I just you just gotta you just gotta know what's what you've shot right. So here, uh, there's this picture uh, right here. There's this picture of this conquistador or or someone I don't know. I, I was in a museum. I don't really remember. Gonna invade this castle. Uh, castle name El Fuerte de Pedro. All right, that's the that's the castle name. Okay, in the background right there, right here in this background. And then I transition using like a cliche zoom in transition right here into said castle so the transition from painting of this castle to actually being in front of the castle is a cool transition right it's 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 taking to account what i want to show in the next frame okay so just if you want to use any fancy transitions like this zoom in one be smart with that right i could say something else like this as well so here we have a boat right a boat in a in a frame with the sea and uh, here i just use a simple fade in transition with a mask um and boom transitions here and then i want to show the people on the boat and then i transition here so i guess another thing to point out that transitions are good to like show location first and then transition into so uh, in this case i'm like okay so i want to use this 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 painting to transition to this boat because i'm i was on a boat and I filmed the boat, and then I want to use this boat to uh, as the location establishment of where I am now. And then, boom, I just want to film, show the people interacting the boat. You know, it, you just got to think about it before you, you do stuff, right? So that's transitioning. Uh, that's how to make your transitions a little more appropriate at times instead of just spamming it, you know, like copy and pasting it, right? It helps you enhance the storytelling by bringing you to this location to another whilst making it aesthetically cool. I mean, nowadays, aesthetics is kind of a big deal, especially in the modern editing age where, you know, a person can get a million views by just having such a subtly aesthetic, you know, lo-fi vibe. So, yeah, aesthetics do matter nowadays, especially if the clientele or yourself are in the younger generation, you want it to look aesthetic i guess so yeah moving on to tip number four establish your location before details now this kind of goes hand in hand with the with the be smart with transitions uh be was be smart with transitions applies to any transition like type so if you want to use a certain transition make sure it has purpose behind it but establishing your location before the details i think it's important specifically for um um time uh not time traveling uh Travel videos, yes. Sorry, it's really early in my part of the world. So, uh, yeah, establishing your location before the details. So, what I mean by this is that, um, let's say uh, you and a friend of yours travel Europe, you know, for five days, right? You got all this amazing footage, but uh, you want to like edit it, right? But, but 
you edit a piece where you're just kind of showing off all the cool things you've done. You know, oh, I went GoPro. I went shark diving. I went to the white houses in this beach that every influencer goes to. Oh, I, I uh, went to the Eiffel Tower. Okay, fantastic. But how are you going to tell the audience who's watching? Because, you know, you're making this video and people are going to see it. How are you going to tell them, like, this is, this is where I was in A and then here's where I was B, da, 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 da. You got to you got to establish the location. So by a drone shot, by uh, just a video of the of the most famous landmark in that area, a video of the open fields, the video of the forest that you're about to enter. You got to establish your location before you can show the details within that location for the viewers to be like, OK, so he's here now. OK, that's see, that's like that's one location. OK, he's here now. And da, 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 da. Now, again, I'm not saying like the whole video has to be like structured like a, like that. I'm just saying if you if you want to show off like, something significant happening in an area, like some, some cool things you've done or some interesting things you've captured, it's always good to establish what where that location is. So if you're filming these like monkeys in a, in a tree somewhere, somewhere in the middle of the forest or something, it's good to establish before entering that before going into that scene if you have like a clip of you panning across the trees or you uh, having an establishing wide shot of the of the of the jungle before you enter you know like stuff like that it's just to help ground where you are uh on this planet i guess or in the video song you know what i mean so in my example here i have a temple that i shot at night that's the day i arrived to taiwan and then the next day we went i went to another temple not the exact temple but I still wanted to show that in this following scene where the people are praying, I'm in the temple, right? Because you can imagine, let's say um, I, I immediately go from, you know, landing into Taiwan, getting to a car and driving off to just going to a temple. There's really no connection there, right? It's like, oh, why is he there? So in the scene pri prior to that, I just wanted to establish, hey, uh, here's the temple and here's people praying. So connection is pe temple, people praying. Oh, that's where he is, right? So yeah, establish your location before the details. This one's a little bit tricky as well because you, you don't want to like always just be like, okay, scene A is established. Uh, me in the jungle with monkeys, cool. Scene B, you want to like mix it up, right? So once you establish your key de your key locations, for example, in this, this video when I went to Taiwan, I went to three, uh, three? Yes, I went to three major locations. The temples, the street food vendor area, like this, uh, there's a street full of street food vendors that are very famous, and the Taipei 101, right? The big tower in the middle of the of Taipei. So uh, these three locations, I made sure to establish within my video uh, prior to showing the details within with, with what I did, and then once everything has been established, like these are the three locations, main locations that I went to. Uh, after that, go crazy with the edit. Just jump all over the place if you want. As long as the, there's a connection to like, oh, he went to this, he, he did go to a temple, he did go to a, a Taipei 101, and he did go get some delicious food at some delicious street vendor street in Taipei street market area. You know, stuff like that. I, if, if it doesn't make sense, it's hard to explain, but it's kind of like, once you edit, you get it, I guess. <laughs> once you've been editing for a while. All right, so number f tip number five is think outside the box. Now, this one is uh, kind of the little things, right, to make your travel video stand out. So, for example, narration, right? So, in this first clip here, uh, I did a video uh, about um, some kid wanting to uh, – so, th this is a real client. This is a kid that uh, wanted to – say uh oh right it's a graduation video okay so he wanted to make a graduation video since he was getting nominated for something right and he he made uh he filmed um a travel video to to hong kong with his mates so uh i told him why don't you narrate something and uh yeah he he narrated it just simply you know the the rule where you put your your microphone like about a about a of of hands hands length hands length uh, hands length away from your mouth. He narrated it, sent me the audio, and boom, he got a super unique feel to his video, right? He he narrated how much he was going to miss his school, uh, how much that trip to Hong Kong meant to him, how his friends will always be with him, blah, 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 right? And then it goes into like their moments together while traveling in Hong Kong. That's the, the narration. So you can narrate, you know, just a little, little 
15 second, 10 second bit in the beginning to enhance the experience. Uh, here is warp music. And what I mean by that is that in this particular scene in my Taiwan video, where you see this mask, uh, I mask this window thing, and there's a transition here happening. Uh, in order to, I guess, make this transition more effective, I warp the music to make it to make it a lower bass because the bass drop is coming uh, right after this transition. So I made it like a woo, right? One of those effects and then bass drop. So it kind of goes low, then high again. And then, oh, so I'm in the action. Look, I was in the play, but now I'm in Taiwan. Oh my God, it's crazy. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> um, and here, uh, another thing is the color grade. Um, so I think it's a really common thing in like, uh, not a really, it's a very, common is it's very common knowledge where when you grade a film it kind of like has the same look all throughout right you grade like a short a short uh, short uh, movie you sort of have the central kind of color scheme uh right um color kind of look to the entire film but uh i think for travel videos since it's not traditional kind of media it's not the big hollywood blockbuster you should break some conventional rules especially when it comes to like set rules right color grading is one of them and um, uh, this is one scene I took from my Taiwan video, but at night I graded it like neon cyberpunk purple. But in the day I, I graded it like, you know, the typical, I mean, the typical bright, you know, cheery kind of kind of vibe um, just to make contrast between the two. Because at night, you know, I personally feel that Taiwan is a very futuristic city, at least to me, for someone who, who's been stuck in one country for more than his life visiting Taiwan for the first time made me look up in the skyscrapers and be like, holy shit, this place is amazing. I don't, I come from like a weird mix of a city and a town and seeing these big buildings where people can just, where people live in and just, just you know, it's a futuristic vibe. And then obviously when I wanted to, when I was like in the daytime during this travel time, I, I made a conscious decision to just keep it as natural looking as possible as, as like the day is as whether it was super bright or super not, I just decided to like, you know, grade this the way um, it looks in real life, kind of cheery and whatever, just to contrast like the night, the, the, the futuristic night vibe of Taiwan with its normal life where I feel more um, at home when it's the daytime because, you know, I, I'm living in China, um, Shenzhen specifically, which is a small little city town, a mix of a city and a town. It's super weird. And being in Taiwan during the day made me feel like I was comfortably at home but at night it was a mysterious wonderful place where everything was bright and stuff right so like color grade i would say can go on the tip of its own but since we're not here to like get into the harder harder things of um editing these are a color grading should be something you, you it's some, something you don't learn uh in one day it's also something that if you're if you're not a professional at it uh it's something that's always going to be tricky like i don't still don't understand color grading i've been editing for eight years uh that's why you have colorists and stuff like that right they understand color but if it's like um um again one of these one of these smaller projects right it's not a big blood big bluster hollywood film you really should have creativity with your color grade because it's not it's not a conventional video right you're not you're never going to see hollywood make a travel video if they do that'd be weird so yeah uh yeah I guess uh, a fi some food for thought, final, final things before we head out of here. Uh, sorry for keeping you guys for so long. But uh, before we head out of here is um, what this social, what, what modern social media has done for like the modern, modern world of videography or photography or, or whatever is it broke kind of all the conventional rules of what people used to think media was, right? Uh, media used to be the news or Hollywood or whatever magazines used to be, right? That used to be media. But now media is so, is so available and so unique and it's so ev ever so evolutionary, right? It's changing every day. Trends disappear, uh, new fads come about, you know, stuff like that. And the world of editing specifically or videography, especially in the new media space, I think rules are meant to be broken. You can go more avant-garde with what you're trying to do. It's not for everybody, obviously, but I feel like due to that, you just have so much more expressionism, um, ex expressionism, ways to express your creativity as an individual, right? Uh, 
when I was when I was uh, when I graduated high school a couple of years ago, I I couldn't go to college immediately. I had to um, take a take a gap year. I had to work, um, find a part time job, earn money, because my parents couldn't afford me couldn't afford to send me off to college. But um, during that time, the way I coped with it, because I was obviously sad because I was behind. I was behind all my friends. Um, and it, the, the pain lasted a while. So what did I do? I went, I, I looked into video editing um, as, sort of a, as, a, as sort of a coping mechanism where I edited videos the way I wanted to without following conventional rules that you were, you, you were taught on YouTube. Oh, you should, uh, oh, you should uh, show A roll, B roll, whatever, right? You, you break conventional rules and it helps you um, a lot. You know, it helps you express a lot of things. So I, I guess, uh, with the, I don't know why I was going with this little tangent. I guess I just wanted to talk about how with this tip number five, you should just go like, go kind of go crazy with your video. Uh, another, another frame I wanted to add was like, go crazy with your masking, you know, like, um, it, like I, earlier I said, be smart with transitions. Yeah. Be smart with transitions, but you know, masking can be one of those things where it, it helps you transition from one place to another without the, pe- the audience even noticing. Right. Anyways, uh, I think I went of a little bit of a tangent there, but yeah, think outside the box, go crazy, break rules. Uh, don't, don't really just. I know the, the breaking the rules thing kind of goes against the first four transit, uh, first four tips. But to be honest with you, these tips are here just in case you want to, you, you're starting out and you want to improve your, your travel videos. But I think, I think t- tip number five, where you think outside the box, where you don't think conventionally of what like a, a video is supposed to be like with the narration, with the warm music, with the color grade, with the, with the way you use masks and stuff like that. I think it'll be cool right uh all right so last piece of advice for any type of video edit is to have fun with it of course like anything in life you should have fun with it (laughs) and yeah so yeah thank you for coming to my little webinar uh i'm webster diaz from black inform media company where we have creativity from creating what creativity (laughs) creativity from a blank slate sorry i've been talking for a while i'm kind of woozy so yeah uh Thanks for coming. That's my webinar. And please uh, take these tips with a grain of salt. Don't be like, these are the rules. Like I said, the tip number five, you should break conventional rules and try your own way of expressionism. Uh, Yeah. Have fun. Ciao.